11.44 hours. Medic response. Brett Daniel had a wonderful life. He and his wife Sarah, both Seattle physicians, were young, healthy, and in love. They treasured family time with their son Lucas. But one morning last year, their life together nearly ended. Is this a white bunny? It was a Saturday morning, and um, we had both finished kind of a long work week. And Brett, when he woke up in the morning, had said, let's go on a long run. It'll feel really good. I've always been an active athlete. I've played lots of sports, never had a problem. It was a beautiful day. Brett was pushing Lucas in the stroller as Sarah worked hard to match his pace. There was nothing ominous, no hint of warning before everything changed. And I turned around and Brett was on the ground. He had been bending over to stretch. And so he had pulled our son's stroller down with him. So the stroller was down and my son was crying. Sarah noticed I was starting to turn blue and was not really breathing normally. And because she's a physician, she recognized, you know, that I wasn't doing too well, tried to find my pulse and couldn't find a pulse and uh, began CPR at that point. Brett's heart had stopped. And for man that's unconscious on the street, turning blue and getting artificial respiration, we are on the way. And I just remember feeling this amazing sense of relief when they showed up. That I wasn't alone. It was either the first or second time they shocked him that they were able to get him back briefly into a sinus rhythm. And then he very quickly went back into ventricular fibrillation. And they have actually shocked him twice, once at 200 and once at 360. Uh, the patient doesn't have a return of uh, uh, pulses with that. I just remember at some point thinking, like, I could leave here without my husband, and he could not be coming home with us. So, Doc, we had that little pulse, now we've lost it. So we, we've uh, started our CPR up again, but we're going to go ahead and shock this really Sounds hard. good. Old CPR. Old CPR. Okay, he's in defib, charging. We're charging. Everybody clear. Clear. Um, right now he's in defib. We're going to shock him 360. Okay, hold. Everybody clear. Shock him. I think every time they had to shock him, I knew in my head that, you know, the likelihood of it working becomes less and less every time they have to shock you. And by the fourth time they shocked him, he went back into a sinus rhythm and they were able to keep him in that. I got a pulse, I got a pulse. Hold, okay, hold, hold, hold. Doc, we got 180 over 70. Excellent. Brett survived cardiac arrest. He has a defibrillator implanted in his chest that will go into action if his heart stops again. The emotional effect for both Sarah and Brett is still strong, months after his recovery. Wow. Without Medic One, there's a good chance I would not be here, or I'd have severe brain damage and would not be the person that I am and have been. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have my cardiac arrest in Seattle, uh, where the highest out-of-hospital survival rates are in the country because of Medic One, because of what they do. and. Um, I just will forever be thankful to Medic One that uh, they saved me. Two, three, jump! Every day since his arrest, I've had the thought of what would it have been like if the medics hadn't saved him, if they hadn't shown up in less than five minutes, if they hadn't acted with the, the strength and the courage and the skill that they have. And then a, a, a pink boat light. A pink boat too. Wow. And I think I'm just so grateful that this amazing man still gets to be my husband and that I still get to have him every day in my life as a partner and as a friend and that my son gets to grow up knowing the kind of man that he could be and that he should be. When survival takes a miracle, extraordinary people make it happen. Thanks to Medic One and the Medic One Foundation, those miracles happen every day.